Canada's notwithstanding clause. It's been making headlines across the country quite a bit recently. So, you might be wondering, what is this notwithstanding clause? How did it come about? And why is it in the news all of a sudden? The notwithstanding clause is the common name given to Section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Charter is the part of Canada's constitution which guarantees certain basic rights to everyone in Canada. Well, most of the time. Section 33 is a sort of loophole, or override, which allows the government to declare that a law will operate notwithstanding some of the rights listed in the Charter. The notwithstanding clause can't be used to override all of the rights in the Charter, only some of them. The rights that can be overridden are sections 2 and 7 through 15, which are freedom of religion, expression, peaceful assembly and association, the right to life, liberty and security, rights related to search and seizure, arbitrary detention, other rights relating to arrest and trial, as well as equality rights. All the other rights in the Charter cannot be overridden. They include things like your democratic rights, mobility rights, meaning the right to enter and leave Canada, as well as to travel in between and live in all the provinces, English and French language rights, Aboriginal treaty rights, and gender equality. It's important to note that the notwithstanding clause only applies for a period of five years. However, the government may pass legislation renewing the use of the clause if it wants. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why would a country include a clause which could be used to undermine the basic rights of its citizens in the very document which is meant to protect those rights? Well, the reason goes back to the early 80s when the federal government, with Pierre Trudeau as prime minister, was trying to patriate the constitution. Up until this point, if the government wanted to change any part of the constitution, they had to ask the British parliament to do it for them, which was a result of Canada's colonial origin. Trudeau was trying to pass a new Constitution Act, which would give Canada the power to amend its own constitution, and he wanted to include the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in this act. A change this significant required substantial support from the provincial governments as well as the approval of the federal government. However, negotiations between the provincial and federal representatives came to a deadlock because some provinces fear that the Charter would give too much power to unelected judges to interpret its meaning. To save the patriation process, then-Federal Justice Minister Jean Chrétien met with the Attorneys General from Ontario and Saskatchewan late at night in a kitchen in a government conference centre. It was there that they agreed to the inclusion of the notwithstanding clause as a compromise. This meeting came to be known as the Kitchen Accord, and it was also here that the amending formula for the Constitution was agreed upon. The Quebec Premier, René Levesque, felt betrayed that he hadn't been included in the late-night negotiations, so much so that he called it the Night of the Long Knives. Because of this, and because he disagreed with some other parts of the proposed constitution, he never signed the deal. However, the constitution only required substantial and not unanimous approval of the provinces, and so the charter was officially signed into law in 1982. So, when has the Notwithstanding Clause actually been used? Well, between 1982 and 1985, the Quebec National Assembly invoked the clause in every single piece of legislation they passed. This wasn't because they were violating Quebecers' freedoms left, right, and center. It was just a symbolic protest of their disagreements with the new constitution. Other than this, the clause hasn't been used much. The federal and territorial governments have never invoked the Notwithstanding Clause, and it has only been used a handful of times by provincial governments. In 1986, it was used in Saskatchewan back-to-work legislation, although the Supreme Court later ruled that the bill was constitutional, so the use of the clause was unnecessary. Quebec used the notwithstanding clause again in 1988 after a judge found that a law limiting the use of English in advertising and signage violated the right to freedom of expression. After the five-year period was up, the offending bill was replaced with a new bill which did comply with the Charter. In 2000, Alberta used the clause to ban gay marriage, but this law was struck down as marriage is in the jurisdiction of the federal government. Gay marriage became legal in Canada in 2005. In 2018, Saskatchewan used the clause so they could continue funding non-Catholic students to attend Catholic schools. An appeal court found that this was constitutional, so again, Saskatchewan's use of the clause was unnecessary. 
There have been a few other instances where provinces have considered using the clause, but they were not passed into law. So, in general, the clause has been used very sparingly. At least, until now, that is. The most recent and controversial use of the notwithstanding clause was in Quebec's Bill 21, which was passed in 2019. Bill 21 bans public sector employees, such as judges, government lawyers, police officers, and public school teachers, from wearing religious symbols at work. Religious symbols can include things like a crucifix, Star of David, hijabs, turbans, and more. The law violates the Charter's guarantee of freedom of religion, but is protected by the notwithstanding clause. The bill's opponents say the law is a form of legalized discrimination, with minorities who wear religious symbols like the hijab or turban being the most negatively impacted. The bill has been especially heavily criticized by school boards, who have said it restricts them from hiring or promoting qualified teachers who wear religious symbols. In a court ruling, Justice Marc-André Blanchard determined the bill to be legal, but nevertheless acknowledged it has cruel and dehumanizing consequences for those who wear religious symbols. He also criticized Quebec's liberal use of the clause and called it excessive. Premier Legault has defended the bill, calling it moderate and claiming it protects the separation of church and state. Legault has also pointed out that Quebec never signed the Constitution. Polls have found that the majority of Quebecers approve of the law. In addition to Bill 21, as of May 2021, the Quebec National Assembly has tabled Bill 96, which aims to further increase the use of French in public areas and workplaces. This bill would also invoke the notwithstanding clause. It would also make amendments to the Constitution, but that's a separate discussion for another time. The notwithstanding clause and its use has been controversial since its very inception, which has led many to suggest it should be repealed from the Constitution entirely. The clause's opponents say that it gives too much power to legislators to undermine the basic freedoms of Canadians. Defenders of the clause say that it is rarely used, it gives elected legislators and not unelected judges the final say, and prevents the politicization of the courts. If governments didn't have the ability to override courts on constitutional matters, proponents argue that politicians would have a much greater incentive to appoint judges with similar ideologies to them. In the United States, which has no equivalent to the notwithstanding clause in its constitution, the politicization of the courts, especially the Supreme Court, has become a major issue. In any case, this may be something of a moot point because it's very unlikely that the notwithstanding clause would be repealed. Remember the Kitchen Accord and the amending formula for the Constitution that was agreed upon? Well, according to that formula, to amend the Constitution, you need the approval of the Federal House of Commons, the Senate, and the approval of at least seven provinces representing 50% of Canada's population. Because Ontario and Quebec have such large populations compared to the other provinces, at least one of the two would have to agree to the constitutional changes. Considering that Quebec is currently using the notwithstanding clause, and Premier Doug Ford of Ontario has openly considered using it, this is unlikely to happen anytime soon. So, what do you think of the notwithstanding clause? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more, I've included links to my sources in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing.